Today I'm going to go over the installation of new Helwig sway bar. It is inch and a half diameter. This sway bar part number is 7777. It is not compatible with the old generation Sprinter van. This is for the 2019 and newer Sprinter van. Looks like it comes with the sway bar, the D bushings and the grease, uh, some thread locker, and a little bit different than the previous generation and the first version of these uh, sway bars were that now they're actually utilizing the Sprinter van bracket. Before they used to make their own, but there was uh, problems with the uh, old brackets breaking. And now they're actually utilizing the old brackets, which I really do like. So let me show you the way on uh, what I'm going to do to uh, replace this sway bar. Okay, below here, you will see the uh, sway bar. This is for the uh, 2019 plus Sprinter van 3500. It is the VS30 chassis. So already from the factory, this sway bar right here is actually thicker than the old generation, um, but still not as quite as thick as the aftermarket Helwig sway bars. So we'll have to remove these two bolts here, these two bolts here, and then of course the sway bar end links here. I'm going to use a air tool. This stuff is not on there super tight, but the air tool will definitely help it uh, make, make it go faster. So let me see if I can set this up. Okay, I'm going to try it with uh, a one hand here and I'm going to use this air tool and you will see hopefully how easy this is to come off. Okay, looks like that one came off pretty easy. This one is really easy. I'm aware I don't have the uh, proper impact ratchet on here but uh, this stuff again is not on there that tight so let that uh, compressor catch up. So I'm going to take off all of these and put it on the bench so you can kind of see what, uh, what I'm working with. super fast. So I'll take these bolts off here, take these bolts off here. And then let me see with these uh, end links here. I don't know if you can see this on the camera. So let me see if I can move this a little bit. We'll see if I can take these end links off here. Simple. Bolt off there. And I just need to do this last side here. This. Can't see this. So you can see the air tools, it's nice to move things fast. Well, I'll need uh, both hands here, so I'm going to remove the sway bar and put it on the uh, bench and uh, I'll compare it to the new sway bar. Here I have the, uh, the factory OEM sway bar that comes with the uh, new Mercedes chassis side by side with the Helwig sway bar. So to the naked eye, it's really hard to tell. The thickness difference but um, I do not have a micrometer you can pick them up pretty inexpensively from uh, Amazon I don't know how accurate they are but uh, a trick that I you can use is here I'm using a crescent wrench or open box or adjustable wrench so you can adjust it to let me adjust it here 
and you can adjust it to here. So I have it adjusted. And let me see if I can get that off. So then I will take a measurement of the actual, I'll start with the three. And let me see if the camera can pick that up. But basically it's one and five sixteenths. About one and five sixteenths uh, uh, wide. And I know this diameter of this sway bar is an inch and a half. My uh, wrench doesn't go up to that size, but I have uh, verified it already. So basically between this sway bar and this sway bar, it's 3 sixteenths of an inch. doesn't sound like a lot, but when I talk to Hellwig, of course they sell this bar, but I think you can find other products online or information online. Um, uh, slightly increase in diameter makes a big factor in how much the sway bar uh, changes in uh, performance. So 3 sixteenths is uh, a decent amount. Originally, I decided to stick with the factory because this generation is much thicker than the old generation. But I still have a lot of, uh, we'll call it the top heavy swaying back and forth. So we'll see if this one makes much of a difference. I mentioned it in the uh, earlier part of the video, but I'm really glad that the Hellwig decided to keep the uh, factory bracket. This bracket is, again, much stronger. Looks like uh, much better made than the original Hellwig uh, bracket. I think they went through a couple of versions of it, and from when I talked to uh, Hellwig, they were actually working on a third rendition because even the uh, Generation 2 uh, brackets, they were still having problems with the uh, breakage, but m might as well uh, utilize the uh, factory bracket because this thing is... Uh, looks like it's well made. So I haven't opened the instructions, but uh, putting in sway bars before, it's been pretty uh, pretty self-explanatory if you haven't done it. Follow the instructions, it's pretty easy. You install this uh, grease here. And basically the sway bar moves, you know, it oscillates and this just helps uh, the friction and should have probably worn gloves but uh, you basically lube the inside of this uh, V bushing and after you put all of this in you're going to mount it onto the sway bar in the approximate same location as the old one so there's one and I will do the second one here Pretty boring watching this, but um, if you don't, don't like this part, I would just uh, recommend fast forwarding to the actual install portion. But uh, installation is going to be pretty simple. Same, same process as uh, just reverse order of how you took it out. Now this grease is very sticky, very sticky, and a mess, of course. Let me clean my hands here. And let me clean the side of this here. It'll probably make a mess again once I put it onto this. So this uh, V bushing has a little split in it. So you basically open up the split and it takes a little bit of effort. And of course a big mess again. And let me clean my hands here. Then you reposition it the way it was. It was approximately in the center of the these two curves. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Get rid of these instructions. I will need those instructions again to uh, figure out what the uh, torque setting that you need for once you tighten everything up. All right. Oops. Just like that. So this bracket will go on like this. I forgot to mention uh, this bracket off the old sway bar that it was pressed onto the uh, um, D bushing. I actually had to hammer it out. It didn't come out that easy. So this will go on like this. And basically we're going to uh, put this back onto the, um, onto the RV and both reuse, the, re reuse all this hardware. So we're going to reuse this hardware here. 
and as well as the uh, bolts on the um, on the arms and looks like they came up with some thread locker here I probably need to uh, look at the instructions and see which bolts these uh, thread lockers go on I don't know if it goes on these or uh, the end links probably these but uh, I'll jump forward to the next part of the video on the actual install okay it's time to uh, put the sway bar back in it would definitely help if you had a helping hand but uh, a lot of things can be done alone just not just a little bit tougher so I'm gonna get this hole prepared already so I remember this bolt going in this position and this sway bar went up through here let me see if I can get this hole started there we go there's one I'll do the other side. I don't know if you can, you probably won't be able to see the other side. But there we go. All right. Then these nuts go on there. And I'll do the other side here. Oh, looks like the other side I used the wrong size uh, bolt here. Then, this part right here, let me see if I can put up here, once this goes up here, these bolts, this is where you have to put the thread locker on. So, if you're not familiar with it, it's just the thread locker, Loctite, numerous uh, names for it, but I'll put it on one and uh, won't bother you with the rest, but you just put some on here like this, just a, looks like this is the blue thread locker and you put the bolt in I'm guessing they have this dude and let me at least get it hand tightened if I didn't mention it uh, these are all 18 all of these bolts including the end links they're all 18 millimeter so if you're gonna do this yourself I would suggest getting 18 millimeter sockets ahead of time because this stuff does need to be torqued down. I'm doing the other side right now. Again, not sure if the camera can capture this side, so let me at least get this stabilized. And once I have this uh, stabilized, I will fast forward the rest. I don't think you need to see the rest of the bolts being tightened, but I'll give you a quick snapshot after everything's all put together. I'm going to uh, tighten everything up now. So let me go over some things that will be really handy. One is an air impact wrench. That's just more for getting things off uh, really quick. Um, I don't actually have an air compressor that is rated for uh, air tools, but I just use a standard pancake uh, compressor on a long hose. And on top of that, um, you'll need a torque wrench. And I mentioned everything is uh, 18 millimeters, so if you have an 18 millimeter socket that goes with your that's on your torque wrench, these torque wrenches, that's just a Tecton brand, it's pretty inexpensive on um, Amazon. And this torque wrench is actually rated to also do your uh, lug nuts on your wheels so let me go button everything up and torque everything down okay here's the uh, finished project you'll see the new sway bars are on here the end links are on here so follow the instructions on the torque setting but the torque for these are 75 foot pounds and torque for these are 79 pounds but again it says it right on the um, right on the instructions I did clean up all the extra silicone grease you didn't see it in the uh, video as well as I actually took the bolts back off and the thread locker only needs to be on the very tip of it that's the only part that actually gets attached attached all the rest of the bolt is actually inside this housing so that doesn't matter but you really need to get that thread locker uh, on the end and uh, finally, if you want to see up close of uh, my sumo springs, uh, the reason they're way off the axle right now is because I'm 
up on uh, uh, jacks right now so I can work under here easier. And there's a good picture of the uh, Fox shocks. So hopefully these uh, sway bars will uh, perform as expected. Now when I talked to uh, Helwig, they said these sway bars will perform approximately 44% better than the factory based on the diameters I gave them. I think I find that uh, hard to believe. If I get like 20-30% uh, improvement, I'll be satisfied. Uh, the bar is actually thicker, so without a doubt there should be uh, uh, expectations of definitely uh, performing better. And then lastly, uh, if you made it all the way to the end, hopefully you enjoyed these uh, videos, so make sure you hit that uh, thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed, of course, uh, subscribe. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.